guys, Tracy Pelfrey here. Happy Saturday. We had a little incident this morning in our house. Someone, two people came to our door. Um, and it made me think of what Eric Meek said in his one video about he had asked Keckle about evangelism classes. And I believe he was met with a no. An answer of no. Uh, when my daughter came in and was telling me what occurred at the door when some J-dubs came, I said, well, let me turn on my phone while you tell me the story so that I don't have to take notes. And you may ask, Tracy, why did you want to take notes or record what your daughter was telling you? Well, because she had told me part of the story to begin with. And I said, wait, let me get my phone and record it. That's why. There's always a reason. The camera popped up. There was a person at the front door. And I have all that stuff out there. I Same saw that there was a person outside. And I, and my first thought was somebody might be trying to take something. Like rummage through it. Like crack it. Like it's free. So I went out there because I was like, who in the heck are these people? There was two people. So I was like, they're yeah. not delivering groceries. Right. I didn't even think you were up yet. So I go out and they just tell me that they're, they didn't even tell me they were JWs. They just said that. They kind of, they introduced themselves. They didn't even really introduce themselves. They just told me that, you know, they have an online Bible study and here's Did you card. startle them maybe by opening the door? Well, or? the alarm went off because I forgot to hit it. Oh. So they, everyone was startled. Oh, so they hadn't even rung the bell or anything yet. They knocked. Oh, as they I knocked. was coming up. If it wasn't for the fact that I saw it on the doorbell or like the camera, yeah, they no one would have heard them. And she handed me this card, which I showed you, like yeah. jw.org. Yeah, yeah. Which free I've, Bible course. It's I've nice. been sent there by Rochelle. I don't know how many times. Right. And then I came inside and I was telling you about it, and then it just hit me like, why didn't they tell me about God? I just want to insert here that she just right away was like. Why didn't they tell me about God? And I said, well, they never do. They do what NTCC does. They just stick a card in your face. And so she said, I'm going to go ask them. And so she put on her shoes and went outside. Why didn't they tell me about their experience? They just moved on to the next house. Right. And that's why I said, I'm going to go ask them. Like, they're not some old crotchety couple. They're very young. Right. Like, let me go ask them why they didn't do that. And so I put my shoes on, went outside. I was looking for them. Sun is, it, you wouldn't even know we had a storm yesterday. No, it's always that way after a big storm. Yeah, it's bright and sunny, it's hot. Yeah. And they were coming away from Alice's. And I just went up to them and I was like, hey, why didn't you tell me about God? They, you could see the look on their face. They realized they hadn't said anything. Why an indictment, isn't it? And they're like, what do you mean? I said, well, you came to my door and handed me this card. I said, I personally know about JWs. I said, I grew up a preacher's kid. I know the Bible front to back. So it wasn't a surprise. I said, but why didn't you tell me about, like, if you really wanted to reach people, why don't you tell me about your experience and your personal experience and what you feel God is in your life? And they were just so quiet and they looked at each other. But they both immediately admitted that they didn't do it. They were like, you're but right. you were saying something before about um, about not knowing up, what people are going through. Right. Like well, they, we ended up moving over here to the doorway because right, the, sun, the sun was over. I was looking at him like this because yeah. the sun was right behind yes. us. And he's like, let's, let's go over in the shade. So we came over to the porch. That's so nice that they didn't just blow you off. No, and everything I threw at them, they were so kind. They really were. And I, I both grew up in JW. Oh, they did? Yeah. I wonder how old they are and how old they God were. Gotta be early married. 20s. Oh, yeah. I don't think they've been married long. I could only see from the camera. You were blocking you, them, but I could see her Her posture was of someone that was relaxed around you. Yeah. And I saw you were animated, and I thought, well, they're they're listening. Oh, well, I was animated because I got that from you. I use my hands when I talk. 
we went through they were they were very patient with me going through different discrepancies with the JW. I think they were very surprised that I knew as much right about Jehovah's Witness as I did. Well, maybe because they never they never engage. Well, and that's and that's what they were so saying. So how and the they guy was, be well versed in that? You they know? both told me they were like, you know, we want to apologize that we didn't do that. And I was like, I really don't care. But in the future, I said there are people going through things, and you just handing a card does not help. Yeah. I said, talk about your experience. Like that's if you want to get people. Yeah. That's how you do. It. You don't shove them. And I because I told them about Rochelle. I didn't use her name, but how she always just reverted me back to a website. And they were like, in the beginning, they were like, oh, yeah, that's not how we like to do things. And I was like, but that's what you did with me. Yeah. You hand me a card to send me to a website. Like, how are you no different? Yeah. Tell me about your experience with God. Tell me why you believe in what you believe. And wouldn't that and be... give a... me... I said, give me some hope. Yeah. Yeah. Give yeah. me something to go off of. Yeah. And and so they, by the end, they were like, yeah, we need to probably do that. I said, if, if you don't hit the same amount of, like, places that your quota, and they're like, well, we don't really have a quota. I was like, you have a quota. Yeah. If you don't hit that quota, at least you know you talk to people. You got to know them. You maybe gave them something. But here's the thing for them as well. The shunning is very real. I talked about NTCC and the shunning, and they both looked at each other. <laughs> like, sounds like us. And it's sad that they grew up in it. Well, and her demeanor, I'll be honest, I was watching her face when I asked him about, you know. What would you do? What would you do if she needs, I said, just a pint of blood, something just to keep her organs going. I said, I said, you're, you're young, you're healthy. Yeah. I said, I'm not wishing this on you, but let's say you go out here, you get in a car accident. Yeah. And all it takes is that one pint. Yeah. I said, now he has lost a family. He's lost his wife. He's going to lose his future kids. And you're willing to just give up that for a pint of blood and a transfusion? I said, who's to say God didn't say you couldn't do that? And I could just see her. She was doing this. Oh, boy. Leaning against the wall. and Maybe to be part faced of, with that question. Part of some of the things I asked was just to see her reaction. Yeah, yeah. And I, I he didn't seem like the domineering type, like, at all. He, yeah. He seemed super sweet. Yeah, I like, could hear I could hear them. On just like her. Yeah. The two of them, I mean, they were so kind and so uh-huh. nice and so sweet. But they have these ideas. And I, I I wanted to just keep throwing things at them. And I can't imagine, as a wife, I've never been a wife, but I can't imagine being one and hearing my husband say, no, I wouldn't do it. Yeah. Like, as much as you both She's may believe She's probably that, never had to face that question. You just learn a fact. Yes. But you're never... You're never put in a position where you have to frame that fact in real life. Yeah, if you can't speak for yourself. Yeah. And I I was telling them, because they thought, they were like, we really, they said, we've never talked to someone who has military experience, medical experience, church experience. Yeah. And they're like, this has been very different. Triple threat. I was hitting them with everything. I said, so... You know, in combat, like, we're trained to transfuse blood. I know every single person's blood type. Well, so then how did you guys end it out there? Um, We both agreed to disagree. And I just reminded them, like, you know, speak with people. And I said, if y'all are ever in the area again, I'd be happy to talk. I'm Mm -hmm. right here. So I'm not home often, but they were just so nice. Yeah. But I got the feeling that. I could eat at them. Yeah. And that's what you want. And and they kept throwing stuff at me, and then I would throw other stuff in the Bible at them. And I think they weren't getting irritated at all. Like, it didn't phase them. But you could tell they were. Maybe for they them, thinking, too, they were finally having to put 
their beliefs yes. to the test. For the first time in their life. Instead of just were... shoving a card in someone's face. And she was like, oh, but I felt so bad that your alarm went off. I was like, that's my bad. I didn't turn it off. Mm -hmm. I didn't realize I was the first person to open the door this morning. Right. So I just opened it. And I said, that's that's no problem. Huh? I said, but you did not tell me about God at all. Not one thing. Yeah. You said that there was this. So you didn't even tell me you were Jehovah's Witnesses. Like. Yeah. And I said, you're not even supposed to be in here because there's no soliciting. Oh, you said that? Yeah, I did tell someone. What did they say? I kept going. Yeah. Because that wasn't the issue. No. My issue was, you didn't tell me about God. You didn't tell me about your experience. You didn't try to witness to me at all. You handed me a card that said JW.org and you said something about a Bible study. And then you walked off. Yeah. Like, what? If, if I didn't know what was going on, that's you're totally like, solved. You'd on. be like, what just happened? Right, if you're someone who yeah. doesn't know, which there's probably not many people that don't know, but... But why would you want to direct someone to a Bible study without giving them the interest? Yes. First, based off of your own experience. Like, why would you not want to do that? Especially if someone opens the door to you. How many people don't and even open the door? In my head, I heard Keckle talking about the lost kids saying they could out preach everyone out and I really felt that I was like this they don't even know the Bible yeah because even he showed me um he showed me a Bible verse that he felt they really um really loved I don't even remember which one it was now because I wasn't paying attention and he read it to me and I was like okay and he showed me on his tablet so later when we were talking about blood I you said had a tablet with him yeah I said how how do you how do you not know that God did not want science to progress? Like he's telling, he's giving you the opportunity to, let's say, get a blood transfusion to get better. I said, how many people have had life altering things happen and they've been saved by medicine and they go out and they do things for God. Their family's better. Their, their life is better. They've done things for other people. I said, who's to say he's not doing that? He's not wanting you to do that. Right. Who benefits from you and just I, and, dying? And it's, right. That's the, that's the legacy like you're you just leave gonna behind. Die. Yeah. Just by. Sorry. And, and so they really didn't have much of an answer for that. And then at one point I just looked at him. I said, you showed me a Bible verse on a tablet. He said, yes, I did. I said, who's to say God didn't, you know, have that person that created that technology for you to be able to walk around and he just looked at me and he was like, you're right. I do have a tablet. It is not the Bible, like an actual book. It is a tablet. I said, so you can get me the word of God quicker and faster because you can just type in something and right. it comes up. Right. I said, that's, that's awesome for what you're doing. That's great. But God created the person that set that up, who created it. I said, who? Well, but does their whole thing with transfusions have to do with something else There's entirely? There's a verse in the Bible. I have to look it up. <coughs> I didn't ask him for the exact one because I'm, I'm sure we can look it up. Make it seem like I remembered everything, right? Which I didn't. About not consuming blood, and that's when I asked him. I said, "Consuming. That's that's." ingesting through your right. mouth. I said, consuming is ingesting, right? And they're like, well, yeah. I said, so if taking it in your arm, it, it helps you live to then further God's mission, why would you not do that? They really didn't have any answers. They really didn't. Right. But by the end, they thanked me for the conversation. They were like, we have not talk to someone like this. And I, I don't want to promote the JWs, but no. I think if you're going to go knocking on doors, tell people something. Yeah. Give someone a bit of hope. Yeah. A little bit of hope. Because, yeah, we got a bunch of old retirees here. You think they're happy. They may not be. That's right. And most <laughs> of them are religious. Yeah. Maybe. So, ignite something in them. Yeah. To remember... You know, a little bit of, 
of well, that. Well, as the Bible say, that remember the God of their youth. Exactly. You know, you would tap into that. Like I could go do that right now if I wanted to. Yep. Like easily. Yep. Easily. We could start our own church if we wanted we to. We really could. And really, but there's I'm, nothing evil about that. There's not. Hey guys, I don't know what happened to the end of that recording. <laughs> I don't know if I clipped it and deleted it and sent it out floating in cyberspace somewhere. But the point we were making was that not to go start a church, like we want to start a group that then claims tax exempt status. No, that, that shouldn't even be the goal at all, at all. But anyone can begin a group of believers, thereby members of the universal church. It doesn't have to be where you're trying to extract money from their wallets and obscene amounts of time to further your personal cause of having this building in this place. Anyway, I thought that was interesting today because of the fact that Eric had brought up about evangelism classes and sticking a church card in people's faces or leaving them somewhere because you believe the place they need to be is in the church where the Holy Ghost will move and save them. Is that the only place that can happen? Or can it happen if you believe that time is fleeting and now it's high time? Then right there when you meet someone, is when you talk to someone. Is that not right?